This is going to be the week for the show me the evidence crowd. And hashtag that every time we see some more evidence. It's, it's absolutely amazing the gaslighting going on where you can literally have a video and it's show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. We have a video that's been disproven. That's been debunked. That's like the new tagline. And you got to love it with all the social media fact checkers, quote unquote. It'll be uh, it'll be like the video has been debunked and you go look in the links and says the the people making these claims said it was a suitcase and not a container. <laughs> it's like if you were laying out this huge bank robbery scene and there's like there's cameras of the bank robbery happening and it was 73 degrees in the room and it was actually 74. It would be like fact checking that and saying these have been this video has been proven false by fact checkers. It's been debunked because the temperature was 74. It's like irrelevant. If you want to call it a suitcase, you want to call it a container, whatever you want to call it. The point is, is everybody left. They except four people who decided to continue counting ballots that were hidden underneath a table. And just magically, it coincides with the data of mathematical impossibilities where Biden just jumps ahead with a huge da data uh, dump. Weird. Absolutely weird. It's so funny. I'm so thankful big data is a thing now. Because it just makes all this nonsense so evident. It's like every key demographic and measuring point from a big data perspective, every state, every county, every city, Trump overperformed and just destroyed Joe Biden, except for the specific places Joe Biden needed to win. Everywhere else, <laughs> Trump killed it, except for the few places that he had to lose. <laughs> Oh, welcome now to Build a Tent. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, sharing the show with a friend. The show is part of the Fight Laugh Feast Network. Go over to flfnetwork.com. Put in HTBT in a memo field. I'm so excited. This is such a great week. This week is going to be golden. There's such good news. You probably haven't heard it because no one's ever talking about it. I think the first time the media has covered that there are actual Senate hearings and state legislatures convening over this election stuff is because Mayor Rudy Giuliani has the coronavirus and they had to bash him for being in groups. <laughs> At least they finally admitted that there's these hearings going on. <laughs> it's absolutely insane, but I'm in a good mood. Go over to flfnetwork.com. We've gotten so many new subscribers. Thank you everyone for supporting us, helping us have a platform, continue to put out great content so that when we do get banned, because you know, Twitter, Facebook, they're gonna get really upset in the next couple of weeks, specifically this week, I think. The banning's gonna come, the, the fact checks and the shadow banning, it's just gonna be rising up and more and more of it because we're getting closer and closer to being over the target. One state is all it takes, and then the rest are going to fall like dominoes. And I have good authority, have it on good authority, from the news breaking that we are going to see this happening this week. It is absolutely phenomenal. But anyways, thank you for supporting us. If you go over to the flfnetwork.com, put an HEBT, you'll get a mug like that. Okay, so I wanted to hit you with a few things that are going on that you may or may not have heard of, just because it's important to know what's going on and stay in the loop because the gaslighting in the media and the narratives and the fact checking and social media can make you think like you're nuts. It's over. Stop fighting. You know, all that good stuff that we talk about constantly. And so that's been kind of like my mission this past couple months is to keep you encouraged with this fight that is coming. And we have momentum now. There's no doubt about it. The tide is turning. And the important thing is to continue to push and to continue to fight. When you get momentum, it is not time to sit back and relax, to take a break. It is time to push forward and crush our enemies. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to crush our enemies. We need to contact our legislatures. We need to contact our governors, even if they don't respond. I was talking with someone earlier today who was saying, I email, I, talk, I call them. They never would get back to me. The important thing is that you do it. They know you do it. They see the emails. They may not respond to you, but the fact that they're getting so much engagement, which typically has never happened, and hopefully, God forbid, and I am seriously say this, God forbid we ever go back to being lackadaisical and not caring. Every single time there's an issue we need our legislatures to stand up for and our governors to stand up for, they should be flooded in the mailbox with tens of thousands of people calling and engaged. That's the kind of citizens we need to be going forward so we don't get into this situation again. But there's great news going on. The first one I wanted to hit was, again, in Georgia. 
And Georgia is really interesting. So we have the tapes. We have the tapes that were going on where there was the stadium video camera where they didn't know the counters, didn't know the city and the state that were doing uh, the counting there in the stadium. They didn't know those videotapes were there or the video cameras were there and they totally got caught. And the debunkers, all they could do is say that it was debunked. It, was, it wasn't suitcases. They were containers. Of it. And they're trying to say that there was a, a, a person there to monitor. But there wasn't. And even if there was a person there to the monitor, why did they kick everyone else out? Why did they tell them to go? And if you go back and you look, and people have done this. I love it. The internet lives forever. You go back and you look at the news uh, notifications during election night. They say they were sent home. They say that people were sent home. So that they're lying to you. They're lying to you. And let's just, let's just remember that this media that we're looking for official respectable sources, which we look for with Fox and all these things, they went along with this Russian collusion thing for four years. That was a complete scam. We've caught them several times using the incorrect pictures and images for stories and different people. So don't look for the mainstream media for your confirmation and official news sources because they're liars they're propagandists that's all they are but anyways not that you shouldn't have conf sources that you are confident in and reliable sources i'm just saying don't let them be the mainstream media by any means so we have the video the smoking gun video we talked about it last week and on top of that this is new in ware county w-a-r-e i hope i'm saying it right where war where it should be a war ware county georgia not a literal war guys calm down dominion machines were seized and they ran through these test ballots and I have, um, I confirmed it with a state um, senator, let's see, oh, it's jo um, Congressman Heiss. His name is Jody Heiss, at Congressman Heiss. He says, yesterday we learned in a forensics examination of Ware County, Georgia, Dominion voting machines found votes were switched from real Donald Trump to Joe Biden. Joe Biden. This one machine in one county in one state, did this happen every, elsewhere? We need to know, examine all the machines, that's right. We should examine all machines. So what did they find in this examination? They put an equal number of votes. From what I understand, it's uh, they put in 100 Trump votes and 100 Biden votes. They did it once and they did it in the same thing. Listen, guys, are you out there listening? This is what happened. They put 100 ballots in, I think it was, but it doesn't matter. It's just the percentages or what's important. They put, let's just say it's 100. It could be 1,000. It could be tens of thousands. They put 100 of each, 100 Trump votes in, 100 Biden votes in. And it came back where the machine per reported 87% of those 100. So let's just say 87 ballots for Trump and 113 for Biden. They should have both came out equally 100, right? If you put in 100 votes for Trump and you put 100 votes for Biden, the percentages should equal. That's right. 100%. Which is, again, suspect. Because remember, we were talking about the decimal thing, which is another way to put percentages in. Why do we have percentages at all? It shouldn't be reported as percentages. It should be reported as whole numbers. It should be 100 votes or at least 87 votes. And like, oh, these 13 got kicked out. But no, it's reported 87% and gave that 13% to Biden. And they thought it was a glitch. So they did it again. And the exact same percentage happened. That is not a glitch. Anyone who... Oh, I'll just leave it there. That is not a glitch. And they did it twice. That means it was programmed that way. That means it was programmed that way. And related to this and needing to audit all these other machines, Jenna Ellis on, was it Fox? I forgot, maybe it was Newsmax, where she broke news that, that the Michigan court ordered an investigation into the Dominion machines where they were able to audit it for eight hours, which from what she was saying was enough. And we should be getting within 48 hours of that, which is Sunday. So either late tonight, Monday or Tuesday reports of that forensic audit. And if we see something similar, I mean, it's enough evidence already what we have in Georgia, right? We have machines that aren't counting and giving votes to Joe Biden. We've seen the CNN tapes where we've seen it on TV, caught live recorded, where the votes have switched. We've seen these tests in Georgia switch. We've seen the percentages being of the votes instead of in, in integers and the whole numbers. We've seen all this stuff. That would be enough. But if we see this in Michigan happening as well, then all of the machines need to be thrown out. All the votes tallied without having the proper 
security measures in place, the, part, the proper auditing, the proper way to validate these, but we can't, we can't count them. How can we certify election when we have these discrepancies where 13% different, 13%. How many states did either candidate win by 13%? Did Biden even win California by 13%? Maybe New York? The big guys. So we have this evidence coming out, breaking in Georgia. And then also the legislatures have a... Let's see, I'm looking for it as I go. Okay, Georgia senators introduce a petition calling for a special session that they could introduce themselves and they can they can open up the session or whatever they call it for themselves. Do you think any Republican senators are gonna be able to withstand the pressure? And did you see that rally that Trump had in Georgia? And the senators that the rally was for got shouted off the stage. They were trying to give a motivational speech to get people out to vote for them and the crowd was yelling fight for Trump and they couldn't get a word in. They couldn't get a word in. Georgia is going to go for Trump. I'm calling it right now. And I'm pretty sure Michigan is as well. Nevada, maybe. Arizona, it looks like it could happen too. I'm telling you, this momentum is building and we need to be asking and continuing to encourage these legislatures in these states, even if you don't live in that state, what they do impacts you in whatever state you're in. So you call them too, and you can tell them, I am not in your state, but what you're gonna do, the, the courage that you're going to have is going to impact me in this nation. You need to grow courage. You need to um, do what is right. That's what our job is right now. That is what we need to do. Oh my gosh, and there's like other things like redacted emails and all that stuff. I wanna go through some of the things that Trump tweeted this week. We're gonna go through them and share you, show you his profile and some tweets because it's very important to see his mindset and where we're at. And I want to encourage you with this. Uh, you are not fighting in vain. You are not fighting in vain whatsoever. But first, I wanna tell you about Samaritan Ministries. How are you paying for your healthcare? As you're considering options, take a look at Samaritan Ministries, a community of Christians who help pay one another's medical bills all without the use of insurance. A broken bone, cancer, pregnancy, medical emergency. As a Samaritan member, you have control over your health care choices. Medical bills are sent to the Samaritan Ministries to help you get a fair routine. And no member will pray for you and send you money to help you pay your shareable medical bills. Healthcare sharing is biblical and affordable. Samaritan Ministries has three programs offering options that could fit your budget. Every month, members send their share amount directly to another member a family membership of two or more ranges from $155 to $600 a month. And a one-person membership can be as low as $75 a month. Visit SamaritanMinistries.org slash how to build a tent to see which sharing program is right for you. You can become a member any time of the year, even today. That's SamaritanMinistries.org slash how to build a tent. SamaritanMinistries.org slash how to build a tent. Use that link, support the show, and go check out a great company, Samaritan Ministries. All right, let us kick up the screen sharing machine and let's go through some of Donald Trump's tweet. I hope we didn't, we did. He's tweeting things while I'm recording the show. So this is like an action response. Uh, great debate, Kelly. It was not a great debate. Let's just be honest. She sounded like a, a robot politician. And I just want to say this. If any of you are considering running for office or know someone that is a good friend of yours that is going to run for office and they have a debate, you should really hire me as a consultant I have some really great ideas how to incorporate technology and leverage where we are in 2020 or 2021, probably when your debate is, where we will just crush the debate. You will be able to engage the people listening, using technology in ways that no one's done. I haven't even seen it in the presidential race, not just saying about these senators in the senator debate, but there are ways that you can leverage technology where you will destroy your candidate with information and all that good stuff. So, if you uh, are running or know someone is running, message me, Matt, at howtobuildattent.com or direct message me on social media, and then uh, we'll help you crush that that next uh, debate. So Donald Trump says, so true, no way we lost the election, and he's retweeting Mark Levin. Highly recommend Mark Levin, uh, definitely a constitutional scholar. And uh, just, again, this, is, he, this clip right here, if you want to go over to his uh, Twitter, talks about the statistical anomalies 
and it's absolutely compelling. We definitely, we being the conservatives, the Republicans won this election and we need to fight to our last breath because if we don't, it's all over. As I've been saying before, another tweet, I'm gonna get down, let's see. Uh, This is good, I love this. What a surprise, has anyone informed the so-called Governor Brian Kemp and his puppet Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan that they could easily solve this issue and win signature verification and call a special session? So easy, that's what they need to do. If you're in Georgia, you need to call them, you need to email them and tell them to call a special session. All right, I'm gonna keep going down. The Christmas trees are pretty. Yeah, that's really nice. They're great decorations. Talks about Mary Giuliani having Corona. Okay, so this is the one that I wanted to hit. And this is from six hours ago. When was that? I don't know when that would be. What time is it right now? Nine, so 3 p.m. Eastern and the, on Sunday. And it's a Scott Adams retweet where he says, uh, where Mike Codrey, uh, Codrey, Codrey, C-O-U-T-R-E-Y, Mr. President, we are asking you to declare Dominion and Smartmatic a national threat order and bar U.S. states and U.S. persons from doing business with them. We do not allow foreign companies to control our elections. Stop uh, Trump rally, stop the steal. Scott says this is a no-brainer. Obviously, we have to do this under the national secur- security umbrella. And Trump says, interesting. So that means that's something he's considering. And if that happens, well, that helps with the Georgia runoff because you can no longer be counting ballots through those machines. They would have to hand count everything. That would be a really smart thing for him to do sooner than later. But I just want you to see this. He's engaged. He's, he's thinking about this stuff. And he is not done fighting. Um, okay, there's one more that I wanted to see. I won the election big. And this goes with his speech Sunday, and maybe this means more than me, more to me because of watching his speech on at the in Georgia for the two senators. But he was saying we cannot let them steal this election. If he would have lost fair and square, and if he would have lost legitimately, he would concede. But because it was stolen, we cannot give up. We cannot let them win. That's the kind of rhetoric he's using right now. He And he knows it. He won the election big. Anyone who is objective whatsoever knows it. Um, so that's the mindset. That's where he's at. He's looking at options. He is continuing to fight. And I just wanted to share that with you because there's some silence and some, I don't know, he's not fighting like he normally does. And I think that's because he has the leverage. And we're going to start seeing this happen this week. For those of you who are show me the evidence crowd, we're going to get the results back from the Michigan forensic. We are seeing the petition put across where people are putting their names to a list, which means if the Republicans don't put their names on that list, they're killing their career. Their career is over. They're going to get primaried if we even have elections after this. So we're going to start seeing moves in Michigan. We're going to start seeing um, moves in Georgia. We have SCOTUS hearings. Uh, Anthony Scalia. No, not Scalia. I'm sorry. Alito, Judge Alito move the date back for some findings and discovery to be submitted for the Pennsylvania lawsuit to the 8th. And there's going to be a lot more stuff coming out this weekend. Pay attention, be engaged, continue to fight, and have a good Monday. We'll talk to you tomorrow.